Before starting out, we'll take a little nap. Remember to call us at midnight sharp, for we must continue on our journey. Yes, sir, answered the innkeeper, winking in a knowing way at the fox and the cat, as if to say, I understand. As soon as Pinocchio was in bed, he fell fast asleep and began to dream. He dreamed he was in the middle of the field. The field was full of vines, heavy with grapes. The grapes were no other than gold coins, which tinkled merrily as they swayed in the wind. They seemed to say, Let him who wants us take us. Just as Pinocchio stretched out his hand to take a handful of them, he was awakened by three loud knocks at the door. It was the innkeeper, who had come to tell him that midnight had struck. Are my friends ready? the marionette asked him. Indeed, yes. They went two hours ago. Why in such a hurry? Unfortunately, the cat received a telegram, which said that his firstborn was suffering from chilblains, and was on the point of death. He could not even wait to say goodbye to you. Did they pay for the supper? How could they do such a thing? Being people of great refinement, they did not want to offend you so deeply as not to allow you the honor of paying the bill. Too bad. That offense would have been more than pleasing to me, said Pinocchio, scratching his head. Where did my good friend say they would wait for me? he added. At the Field of Wonders, at sunrise tomorrow morning. Pinocchio paid a gold piece for the three suppers and started on his way toward the field that was to make him a rich man. He walked on, not knowing where he was going, for it was dark, so dark that not a thing was visible. Round about him, not a leaf stirred. A few bats skimmed his nose now and again, and scared him half to death. Once or twice he shouted, Who goes there? And the faraway hills echoed back to him, Who goes there? Who goes there? Who goes? As he walked, Pinocchio noticed a tiny insect glimmering on the trunk of a tree, a small being that glowed with a pale, soft light. Who are you? he asked. I am the ghost of the talking cricket, answered the little being in a faint voice that sounded as if it came from a faraway world. What do you want? asked the marionette. I want to give you a few words of good advice. Return home and give the four gold pieces you have left to your poor old father, who is weeping because he has not seen you for many a day. Tomorrow my father will be a rich man, for these four gold pieces will become two thousand. Don't listen to those who promise you wealth overnight, my boy. As a rule, they are either fools or swindlers. Listen to me and go home. But I want to go on. The hour is late. I want to go on. The night is very dark. I want to go on. The road is dangerous. I want to go on. Remember that boys who insist on having their own way sooner or later come to grief. The same nonsense. Goodbye, Cricket. Good night, Pinocchio. And may heaven preserve you from the assassins. There was silence for a minute, and the light of the talking Cricket disappeared suddenly, just as if someone had stuffed it out. Once again, the road was plunged in darkness. End of chapter 13